Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... In the Arabian room of QQF Incorporated, Ponsonby Hopkirk was instructing his client, Vincent East. No, 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 man. You're not putting enough into it. How can you get any satisfaction out of your fantasy unless you really believe in it? Now, think properly, murderously. Lift the camera gun a little higher. Oh, it's still not very good. You won't get anywhere unless you concentrate. Now, fix me with your eye and think. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. Ah, much better. Much more realistic. Ah! Vincent didn't even bother to look at Hopkirk. He crossed over to the table and picked up the top file. QQF Incorporated. Fantasy number three. Subject, the assassination of the Crown Prince of Bahrain. Ah, well, thank you, Mr. Hopkirk. Thank you for planning it all so nicely. <laughs> well, don't worry. I'll see that it's all carried out to the letter. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. So many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. I've tried it. And it works beautifully. I've tried it on my children's clothes, on a general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Mm -hmm. Since then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 5 of this story, in which Emma Peel ponders over the assassination plot thought out by QQF, and John Steed gets to meet Prince Ali, the proposed victim of the fantasy game. John Steed and Emma Peel had held a council of war in Steed's apartment, trying to work out not who had committed three murders, but why. It wasn't until they'd pooled their knowledge regarding their separate visits to Quite Quite Fantastic Inc. that they suddenly had an idea. The Crown Prince Ali of Bahrain was visiting Britain, and strict security precautions were being taken to protect him. Emma Peel remembered that Hopkirk of QQF had told her he's often had the task of planning several fantasy assassinations for the relief of tension of several of his clients. Steed and Mrs. Peel had looked at each other, and without saying a word, agreed it was time to pay another visit to Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk. They made good time to number 10 Beaver Street, but by the time they got into the Arabian room, Vincent had gone, and Hopkirk lay on the floor, dying. Uh, uh, gently, gently now, gently. Uh, fan fantastic. Quite fantastic. Steed, look at this file on the table. QQF Fantasy Number 3. Subject, the assassination of Crown Prince Ali of Bahrain. And the file is empty. Hopkirk. Hopkirk. Uh, no. No good. Hopkirk, this, this fantasy, the murder of Prince Ali. Now, when's it to take place? Tomorrow. Do you... Tomorrow night. But how, Hopkirk? How? I've got to stop it. Tell me how. Too late. The plan's been taken. It's already underway. It's too late to stop it now. Just too late. <laughs> Back in Steed's apartment, Steed mixed a hefty drink. 
You're getting as bad as Mother, Steve. Cheers, Steve. Cheers. Although at the moment there's really not much to cheer about, is there, Mrs. Peel? What are we going to do? Well, why don't you just go to the Crown Prince and tell him there's going to be an attempt on his life tomorrow? Oh, I can't do that. Well, it seems simple enough. Well, look what it says here in the newspaper. You know why he's come over here. Hmm. To sign over the oil concessions in our favor. Exactly. In return for which we will give his country full military protection. Well? Well, what faith will he have in our military protection if we admit that we can't protect him, one man, right here in our own country? Oh, point taken, Steed. I could ruin the whole deal. He'd take his business elsewhere. No. No, we'll have to be more subtle. Think something out. I wonder what Hopker planned. Steed, do you think the killer will use a gun? A gun, a knife. Yes, yes. Remember that ornamental dagger? It does all seem to fit in. Or poison. Why poison? Well, I was thinking about those wretched jars of honey. They've got to fit in somewhere, too. They're important somehow. Well, whatever method the would-be murderer employs, he's got to get close enough to use it. And one thing's certain. Prince Ali won't step outside the embassy once he's in there. Mm, I agree. That means the killer's got to be smuggled in. Well, that's it. The major difficulty... He has got to get into the embassy somehow. And so have I. The reception hall of the Bahrainian embassy is large, opulent, and beautifully furnished in a Middle Eastern style. A gong crashed out. Along the corridor hurried a large man wearing traditional Arab robes. He approached a dais in the hall and prostrated himself on a large cushion. I crave pardon for this intrusion, Your Majesty. And what is it, Grand Vizier? An effendi from the British government, most high and gracious one. He begs to be admitted to your most high, illustrious presence. Mm, is he to be trusted? His credentials have been checked once, twice, thrice times over, O oh high one. His person has been searched for offensive weapons. I, who am only a speck upon the camel's back, a lowly, ignorant toad in all seeing eyes, think he can be trusted. Then admit him. At once. At once, master of wisdom, with all speed. The vizier waddled out and whispered to John Steed. You enter with the head bowed. Do not speak until his highness addresses you. Advance with head bowed. Steed nodded and was ushered into the presence. Effendi Steed, Your Majesty. Now, oh, what is your business, Mr. Steed? A social call, Your Highness. I'm with the Ministry of Eastern Affairs. We merely wish to ensure that Your Majesty is enjoying his stay in this country. Thank you. You may gaze upon the royal features. Steed raised his head and looked at an extremely nice-looking young fellow of 30. Boyishly handsome, dressed in flowing robes and traditional headcloth. On behalf of my peoples and my country, I, Ali Belshazzar Moham Gabar, Crown Prince of Bahrain, defender of the faith, soother of all souls, lighter of dark corners, maker of men's destiny, fountain of wisdom, <coughs> welcome thee, uh, Vizier, you may retire. Yes, so great one. The Vizier backed carefully through the curtains. The Prince got up from the dais and said, That's got rid of him, thank heavens. Uh, do you play cricket, Mr. Steed? Oh, well, yes, yes, I do, but... Bowler or batsman? Well, uh, but an all-rounder, Your Majesty. Oh, that's... jolly good. <laughs> the prince tossed aside his traditional robes and appeared dressed as an ordinary young Englishman in white slacks and an open neck shirt. Henry? He got high enough. The guard at the door snapped to attention. Set up the wicket and get over to the far door to keep an eye out for the jolly old Grand Vizier. He's one of the old school, you know, Mr. Steed. Bit of a stickler for tradition. The prince reached behind the throne and produced a cricket bat and ball. Harold, Herbert, take up fielding positions. Two guards leapt forward at the command. The prince tossed the ball to Steed and took his place at the wicket. Ah, right. Send him down good and fast, Steed. Come on, that's a royal command from the Fountain of Wisdom and all that stuff. Oh, very well, Your Highness. Steed shrugged his shoulders, paced away to the end of the hall and started to bowl. That's the style. Keep them coming, keep them coming. While Steed was playing cricket with the Crown Prince, Mr. Arkady, the curiously healthy Turkish gentleman, was in the health centre again. He was lying on a slab under a sunray lamp and wearing nothing but dark glasses. Vincent entered. 
I have been reading the QQF's plan. I have no doubt that if we follow the instructions as laid down, you will penetrate the security of the Bahrainian embassy, and it will all work out very smoothly. Now, half Kirk certainly knows his business. He <laughs> knew his business? Uh, quite, as you say, knew. Uh, are you ready to go? Uh, yes, Mr. Arkady. Uh, I've overlooked nothing uh, except the payoff. Arkady regarded him distastefully through his dark glasses and picked up a towel. He unrolled it and revealed a pile of notes. Vincent picked up the pile eagerly, then reacted amazed. The notes had been neatly cut in halves. Arkady gently retained one half with an elegant finger. <laughs> a half now, and the other half when the job is done. Those were the agreed terms. Yes, but when you said uh, half, I, I thought you meant... Uh, I mean, uh, I expected half the amount. Yes. <laughs> Not, we, uh, we must try to trust one another, my dear Vincent. We really must. Now, take your time about the job. A sure aim, and one... Nice bead. Bang. John Steed had to admit that Prince Ali was a far better batsman than he was a bowler. Yeah, I think a break for tea is clearly indicated. You would like some tea, Mr. Steed? Oh, thank you, Your Highness. Yes, yes, I would. Uh, you summoned, oh, great and high one. I certainly did. Tea, Vizier, for myself and my guests. Instantly, Your Highness. The Vizier clapped his fleshy hands, and instantly the curtains parted. Two heavily veiled harem girls appeared through the drapes, carrying trays of tea and various things to eat. Well, I've heard of instant refreshments, but uh, now that, that really is service. Oh, we don't stand any laxity, you know, Steve. Uh, these are a couple of my wives, by the way. Oh, uh, number four and number... Uh, let's take a closer look at... Ah, number 33. Charming girl. Cost me a bag of salt and four goats. I've got lots more out the bag. Uh, goats? Wives. Matter of status, you see, having a lot of them. Was there how many wives at the last count? 239. You're much one. I should think you'd have to be mighty, too, with that lot. I see your eyes flashing at the prospect, Mr. Steve, eh? But did you stop to consider that a man with 239 wives also acquires 239 mothers-in-law? Eh? Hmm? That's a very sobering thought. Ah, well, then. Here are hot scones. W would you, uh, what would you like with him? A little goat's cream? Papyrus jelly? Hmm? Uh, you, you haven't got any honey, have you? Honey? Ugh, I loathe the stuff. Vizier, honey for Mr. Steed. And make sure you taste everything on the trays before we eat. I'm sorry to insist on this, Mr. Steed, but you see, so many people want to kill me. Would you believe that? Your dog gives you a lot of pleasure. Now here's something you must do for him. Give him all new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete. New Procos contains all the energy-giving vitamins and protein a healthy dog needs. So with new Procos, you need feed him nothing else. New Procos Health Food is all he needs. Care for your dog. Give him new Procos Health Food for dogs. It's complete, and he'll love it. No dirt can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Whelan had to wash greasy overalls. And I said, oh, well, I won't worry. I'll stick it into cold water Omo, and sure enough, every bit of grease is out. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.